So it looks like we've found a new gas giant at Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is, of course, the nearest star to the sun and the lead star of the constellation Centaurus down there in the southern hemisphere, just to the left of the Southern Cross. You can see Alpha marked with the arrow. And it is, in fact, a triple star system. We have a comparison here between the Sun and the three stars of Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri A, called Rigel Centaurus. Alpha Centauri B has a name, Toliman, and Alpha Centauri C is called Proxima Centauri because it's in fact the nearest star to the sun by a very small margin compared to the other two, at just over 4.2 light years away from us. And I've got this uh, image here, which shows a lovely picture of that part of the sky with a couple of insets. So again, we have the Southern Cross just left of the center, the band of the Milky Way, and then the stars Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri, which is not Alpha Centauri B, it's a se separate star system entirely. And the first inset is a zoom in showing Alpha Centauri A and B split, uh, which you can do with a fairly modest telescope. They're four arc seconds apart, so that's achievable. And Proxima Centauri orbits around the AB pair so far away, in fact, that it's quite distinctly different. I think it's about eight degrees of sky away across the Milky Way there against the star field where you find Proxima. Now that's a very faint star because it's a little tiny red dwarf, too hard for most people to observe, especially against the myriad other stars in that vicinity. Now, the question has always been, in these double star systems like Alpha Centauri A and B, can you orbit planets? Is that possible? Can you have stable orbits? Well, the answer is yes, in one of two ways. Either you orbit one of the stars, doesn't matter which one, close enough that you are in a zone where its gravity is dominant and the other star is far enough away that it doesn't uh, affect things. That's called being inside the hill sphere of the star, and you can mathematically work that out. And we have this diagram for the Alpha Centauri AB system here. You can see A at the top left and B at the bottom right. And they're about 11 astronomical units, the Earth-Sun distance, apart from each other when they get closest, although the orbit of A and B around each other is somewhat elliptical. Um, so this is their close approach. Right? They can be further away than that. And at that distance, you find that there is a ring inside which you can form stable orbits around each of the two stars. It's a little bit smaller for Alpha Centauri B than it is for Alpha Centauri A, because B is a little bit less massive as a star, and so has weaker gravity. And of course, the other option for orbits in a binary system is really what Proxima Centauri, the little red dwarf, is doing. That is 13,000 astronomical units away, far enough away from the AB pair that essentially it treats them as a single gravitating central mass. And they, the distance between them is so small, it's less than one part in a thousand after all. So. Uh, it can just ignore the fact that there's a double there at all. And you can you can do that as a planet. You can orbit around a pair at a long distance. Now, back in 2021, there was a possible detection of Alpha Centauri candidate planet C1, a super Neptune. I don't know why they call them super Neptune, because super Neptunes are like Saturn really, and perhaps uh, I suppose we might start thinking rings as soon as someone says Saturn, so perhaps that's why they choose to call them super Neptunes. And this was detected in this uh, image here of an orbit of 1.1 astronomical units taking 
just about a year, 360 days. And the estimates of the mass were somewhat vague, somewhere between nine and 35 times the mass of the Earth, and somewhere in terms of size between 3.3 and seven times the Earth's radius. Um, so, in fact, you know, Neptune itself would be 16 times the mass of the Earth, so right in the middle of that range. Um, so a super Neptune is going to be at the upper end of that scale, perhaps. So that was four years ago in 2021. And at the time when I first talked about this, I said that James Webb Space Telescope was due to search for planets around Alpha Centauri in July and August of 2023. And we have some results. So this is the best image from the Hubble Space Telescope, very nicely showing the A and B stars separated out. When James Webb turns its cameras, and in particular its MIRI, mid-infrared instrument, to the A and B stars, you get the image up at the right there. Um, the characteristic six-fold symmetry tells us this is James Webb, the bars pointing away from the pair of stars there, but you really can't see anything. The stars are so nearby and so bright as a result that they're rather overwhelming the camera. So we've got to do something about that direct starlight. And fortunately, you can use, along with the MIRI instrument, a device called a coronagraph a metal blocking plate that you can swing in into the light path and try to block out the light that's coming from the stars and leave just the light that is bypassing the disk. And so we have this image at the top here. Uh, you've got a little square box around Alpha Centauri A and the rather brighter Alpha Centauri B far enough away that we're not worrying about it. It's what's going on inside that little tiny square box and the star marking the position of Alpha Centauri A that we're interested in. But all over the image, you can see the bright spots and ridges that are caused by stray light. It's not possible to block out all of the light. Some of it will diffract round your blocking instrument, your coronagraph, and gets into the camera in an interference pattern. And you can see that interference pattern around the position of the central star where the little orange star has been placed in the image. And so that makes it very, very difficult to spot planets, especially when they're close to the star. But it's possible to clean the image up, uh, pass it through filtration in computers and in particular, subtract out the expected interference pattern. Now, that's given us a picture at the top right there. The orange star and the black disk is the coronagraph marking the position where Alpha Centauri A has been blotted out. And you can see there's still some stray light coming around, but there is a fairly bright object labelled S1 with the ring around it that is believed to be this probable planet. Actually, there are a couple of other blobs in there that might be interested in, but maybe they're just noise. We don't know. So James Webb may well have found this object, but we seem to have lost it again. Having been detected last year in 2024, no new sightings have been obtained. The uh, telescope was able to use a little bit of discretionary time to follow up the observations in February of this year, 2025, and again in April. And in both cases, no detection was made in the data. So maybe the planet is orbiting around the star and has moved out from it's the position far enough away to, from the star for us to detect and is perhaps either in the line of sight or behind the star or so close to it that we're not able to determine its position. Now, that's interesting. <clears throat> that means it's moved. 
And from the results of the non-appearance of it, a number of simulations have been done <clears throat> to suggest what the orbit might be. And it looks like the best fit is an elliptical orbit around about one to two astronomical units. And with the brightness of the image that was detected, suggesting a size similar to Saturn, we're talking about a gas giant planet orbiting in the habitable zone. You can calculate the zone around the star where the temperature is going to be such that liquid water can exist. And that's between uh, zero and 100 degrees C. Hotter towards the center, cooler towards the edge. And for Alpha Centauri A, that zone runs from around about 0 0.8 AU to 2.4. So an orbit going from one to two AU puts it in the habitable zone. Now it's obviously quite a big swing in habitable temperature because it would go from being quite warm to being quite cold. So the seasons would be dominated by the orbital motion rather than just as it is with Earth in our near circular orbit, our seasons are dominated by the tilt of the axis giving one hemisphere winter and one summer. Here, the entire planet would move out into the winter configuration and then back into summer as it went round its orbit. And you can see, just for good measure, Alpha Centauri B on the right there with a rather smaller habitable zone. It's a cooler star than uh, our sun, so you have to get a bit closer into it. But nevertheless, it's unlikely that a gas giant planet the size of Saturn orbiting in an orbit like this is going to be habitable directly and have its own life on it. But gas giant planets, certainly the ones we know in our solar system, have families of moons. And those moons would be at a similar sort of temperature. And so there's an artist's impression here of a large planet-sized moon, in fact, a couple of them orbiting around a gas giant planet. And maybe that is something that we should be looking out for. It's certainly true because uh, in the case of uh, quite a number of sun-like stars that were found to have transiting planets in the uh, Kepler discoveries of 20 years or so ago, we have found quite a number of these exoplanets to have exomoons by transit timing, timing the movement of the planet in front of the star and detecting whether or not it's arriving early or late based on whether it's got a moon of significant size leading it or following it. So we really need to follow these observations up. And one possibility is that James Webb will continue trying to place further observations, but we're also due to launch in 2027 out to accompany it out at L2, the Lagrange point beyond the Earth, a million miles out in space, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope with its 2.4 meter mirror. And it's got a 300 megapixel camera which uh, with that uh, optical system, it's going to give it a 100 fold increase in the field of view compared to Hubble. But it, more significantly from our point of view, it's also going to be fitted with a coronagraph so that it can target exoplanets. And it will begin to do, uh, do work in a couple of years time if all goes well. And so maybe we will be able to turn this to point to uh, the Alpha Centauri system and find more planets and find out more about the ones we know about. So thanks very much for listening and I hope you've enjoyed that short video about the possible discovery of a gas giant planet in the star system right next door to our own.